Messiah. Born of a virgin. Son of God. Son of man. You are King of kings. You are Lord of lords. You, you are, are the name, name above all names. special Christmas morning, a special day that we come and we say there's good news of great joy for all people. We all come together and celebrate this good news. So this morning, we're kind of going to be on a journey. Pretend you're just a group of Christmas carolers running around the town, and we're going to enjoy just being together, singing the carols, hearing God's word, and maybe a few surprises along the way. So come, oh come all ye faithful.
What a beautiful name it is, our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this morning we've gathered to celebrate the Heavenly Father's gift to us. What a great a gift he has given to us. So it is with great joy that we celebrate our Savior's birth, his coming to earth to show us the way to live and our Savior and our salvation. There's no other name under heaven given among humanity whereby we can be saved. We do count it a pleasure to have you with us this morning and to worship on this Christmas Eve. An integral part of our worship at uh, Clinton Frame is to spend time in prayer, to, to minister to needs that we have in our community, those that are present with us this morning, and those that are not able to be with us. And so this morning, I do want to mention a number of individuals that we need to pray for this morning. We continue to uh, pray for God's blessing upon uh, little Elijah Ray and uh, his parents. We also want to pray this morning for Ron Hundrich, Danya Rondo, Cliff Boyer, and Del Slayball. So if there is a need that you would have, if you would like to have someone pray for you this morning, we invite you to stand, and then those nearby will lay hands on you, and we'll have prayer together. So are there any who would like to have prayer, especially this morning? If it's all, you, you can just stand at this time. Okay. Are there others? Let us pray. Dear God, we come in the name of Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals, the one who ministers to our very need. We thank you our Heavenly Father, for the gift of salvation. Jesus, we thank you for coming and living among us. Holy Spirit, we thank you for indwelling us, enabling us to experience your touch and your blessing this very morning. We do pray for your continued blessing upon Elijah Ray, continued healing for Ron Hundrich and Donya Rondo, and Cliff Boyer and Del Slavo. And for each one of these who are standing, that they may sense your love and your care. We thank you that you can do far more than what we can ask or imagine. We do pray that you continue to stretch our faith and our imagination of what you would like to do in the kingdom here and now as well in the future. So we pray your blessing upon these. And we sense what you want to do and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Just one announcement that I would like to make to remind you that next Sunday we'll be celebrating communion together, coming around the Lord's table, uh, looking forward to what he has for us in the future as well. So you can keep that in mind uh, for next Sunday. At this time, then, we'll ask the ushers to come forward to receive our tithes and our offerings. Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation. Jesus, we thank you for coming and being among us. And now, God, it is a privilege and a pleasure for us to give back a small token of what you have given to us. Take these gifts, break them and multiply them to build up the kingdom in our community and around the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave to us his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not per- shall not perish, but will have eternal life. Deuteronomy 7, 9. Know therefore that the Lord your God is God. He is faithful. He is the faithful God, keeping his com- covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. This morning, we light the candle of love. famous theologian was once asked what his favorite song was. What was the deepest, most meaningful song for him? And he responded back, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. That song echoes John 3.16, for God so loved the world. But why? Surely it's because we have, as a human race have always worshipped God, right? Now we know that's not the case. In fact, if anything, throughout history, we've seen that God is probably the least worshipped God. We see this in Israel's history time and time again giving themselves over to idolatry, worshiping the pagan gods, sacrificing their children to Molech, prostituting themselves before the god Baal. Time and time again, Israel and the world that that Jesus comes into fails to worship God. And so surely it is not because they had been faithful to God. Rather, God loves in spite of the fact that they don't worship him. Are we all that different at times? How often do we put other things and worship other things instead of God? How often do we put Sports, or money, or family, or leisure, or the the myriad of other things in our lives before worshiping God. Yet, for God so loved the world. Perhaps it's because humanity has always treated each other so well. Yet we know that's not the case either. Jesus is born into a very violent world. The Roman Empire at that time would would crush through military power, through military might, war and power. Being the strongest is what mattered. Jesus was born into a violent world where people were treated as objects, as slaves, as things. But surely in 2,000 years, we've come a long way. Surely we no longer go to war with one another. Surely we no longer hate. Surely we no longer murder or treat people as objects. Surely not anymore. Surely not anymore do we say cruel things to one another. Surely not anymore do we write that thing on Facebook where we treat people like objects. For God so loved the world, not because of us, not because of anything amazing that we have done, 
but rather in spite of who we are. God so loved the world. God still loves the world. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. And that love of God means that God does the most unexpected thing. He becomes that which he created. Jesus becomes human flesh, not as a powerful king to rule all nations, but he comes in swaddling clothes, in a humble, lowly manger, a child dependent upon others, a child who needs his diaper changed, a child who will throw up on himself, a child who is weak. But something happens. This is the beginning of this holy revolt against the chaos, against the hate, against the murder in our world. For God so loved the world that he sent his son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. This life that Jesus offers, this new life born in a manger, offers abundant life. A life that, that literally means, eternal life literally means a new age. And, and Jesus offers us the entrance into this new age where life and not death is what matters. Life. True life, a new reality, a new way of thinking, a new way of acting, a new way of being. Not one dominated by our own hate, by the things that we do that are evil, but rather life dominated by a Christ-like behavior, a Christ-like attitude. A life dominated by love. For God so loved, not because we are lovable. Not because we've done things that are loving, but because God himself is love. It is this child born to change the world that magi seek out that night some 2,000 years ago. It is what happens in this manger that angels announce with rejoicing to shepherds in a field, Behold, good news, hope has come, joy has come, peace has come, love has come, and his name is Jesus. Born of human flesh. Born to die, to redeem humanity, to change the world. Behold, a child has come. As the worship team comes, let us get into the mindset and remember that night a holy revolt happened. A holy revolt began. That love came down to change the world. Would you stand with us and continue singing some carols this morning?
up at this time, please. Are you guys all excited for Christmas tomorrow? Yeah, good. All right. Hey, you know what? Because we've got some special things going on this morning, can you guys all scooch this way with me? If you guys can all come down this way, because I think we've got some special guests coming out this morning for us. You guys get your mic. Mine's right there, too. Sorry, we got a few things here. Thanks. All right. Would you guys like to pretend? Do you guys ever like to pretend? Yes. Do you want to pretend with me this morning? Yes. No. Well, we're going to pretend this morning. <laughs> he didn't catch that. He said no. Um, we're going to pretend that we are part of the first Christmas, okay? So we are going to tell the Christmas story, okay? So, if you will with me, we are going to listen to the Christmas story and see what else happens this morning and what kind of visitors we have, okay? Just give me one second here. I remembered something. Go give that to the angels. Okay, so let's listen to the story this morning, okay? Go give it to the angels. At that time, Augustus Caesar sent an order to all people in the countries that were under Roman rule. The order said that they must list their names in a register. This was the first registration taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own towns to be registered. So Joseph left Nazareth, a town in Galilee. He went to the town of Bethlehem and Judea. This town was known as the town of David. Joseph went there because he was from the family of David. Joseph registered with Mary because she was engaged to marry him. Mary was now pregnant. While Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have the baby. She gave birth to a, her first son. There were no rooms left in the inn, so she wrapped the baby in cloth and laid him in a manger. That night, some shepherds were in the fields nearby watching their sheep. An angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord was shining around them, and suddenly they became very frightened. The angel said to them, Don't be afraid, because I am bringing you some good news. It will be a joy to all people. Today, your Savior has been born in David's town. He is Christ the Lord. This is how you will know him. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Then... A very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel. All the angels were praising God, saying, Give glory to God in heaven, and on earth let there be peace to the people who please God. Then the angels left the shepherds and went back to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. <laughs> We will see this thing the Lord has told us about. So the shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph. And the, shepherd, and the shepherds saw the baby lying in a manger. Then they told what the angels had said about this child. Everyone was amazed when they heard what the angels had said to them. Mary hid these things in her heart. She continued to think about them. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep, praising God and thanking him for everything that they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them. The wise men saw the same star they had seen in the east. It went before them until it stopped above the place where the child was. When the wise men saw the star, they were filled with joy. They went to the house where the child was and saw him with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped the child. They opened their gifts they had brought for him. They gave him treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So this morning, you guys, as we celebrate Jesus' birth, God gave us the greatest gift there is, didn't he? Didn't he? Do your mom and dad ever do this to you? Do they ever go... 
<laughs> do they ever do that to you? Do they? Why do they do that? Maybe grandma and grandpa do it too. Why do they, why do they kiss you on the cheek? Why do they do that? Do they do it because they love? They love you. They love you so much. And I heard a song that's been sticking with me. And one of the lines in that song was, heaven came to kiss the earth. And I think that's such a beautiful picture of what God did when he sent Jesus here. He gave us a great big kiss with Jesus' love. And he sent here to love us and to save us from our sins, didn't he? So let's say a little prayer and then we're going to do something, okay? So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise you for this morning. I praise you for your son. I thank you for so much love that you give us each day. God, I just pray that this Christmas we'll remember why you sent Jesus here and why we celebrate Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. You guys want to come over the manger with me? Let's walk quietly over there, okay? Kids and animals. It is into a dark world that Jesus sends his light. Born of Mary. A light that will shine in the darkness. God didn't send a light because the world was already full of light. God sent a light because the world was in need of a light. I think as we look at our world around us, we see a world in need of light. We see a world that was never meant to just be for us, but a light that was to go out. A light that we weren't to keep hidden, but to let shine brightly. We are that light. The same way that Christ was born as a light for the world some 2,000 years ago. So he gives us this mission, this task to go out and to be light. 
to shine forth brightly. Give peace where there is conflict. To give hope where there is hopelessness. To give joy where there is mourning. To give love where there is hate and apathy. To give Christ. To give that light. Just a minute, we're going to light the Christ candle. May it serve as a reminder for you, not just of what Christ had done, has done, but also to look at the ways in which you can be a light for your neighbor, be a light for this world. In just a few moments, we're going to light the Christ candle, and then we're also going to light our candles. And as we sing, as that candle is lit, may it serve as a reminder for you of what Christ is calling you to do and to be in the world. Some of you, I know, some of the kids have little glow sticks. At this time, it would be the perfect time as the candle is passed to, to just bust them. There we go. And to let them shine. If you do have candles, allow the candle that is already lit to be still, to be upright so we don't get wax everywhere. And you lean your candle in. And as this happens, just pass to the next neighbor and the next and the next as we sing and as we worship. As we remember Christ come into the world. And so this morning, we light the Christ candle.
take a moment to look around. Look at the light. Silent night, all those many years ago, as shepherds kept track of their sheep, and angels appeared in the midst of it all, proclaiming joy, proclaiming good news. As we transition, as you transition out of this place this morning, may you remember that joy that joy that you proclaim each and every day of your life as you are a light. And so with the angels, let us join the angels and stand and proclaim our joy that has come into the world. Go in peace, go in hope, go with Christ. Amen.